Okay, part number four. Is it number four now we have here? We've got the battery finally in the box now. I cleaned out the box before with a vacuum cleaner and now we've got the batteries exactly the same way in the box and I've also attached the bus bars already. So this is the final stage. This will be our main negative and the main positive there. And then we have to do a connection. We have to do a connection from this positive here to this negative here with a cable and two uh, ring lugs. And speaking about the ring lugs, well, I'm a bit concerned about the ring lugs I have ordered from eBay here. I've got three different ring terminals here. 35 by 6 by 8 and by 10 because we've got different studs different screws here Obviously the 6 millimeter is for the batteries the 8 millimeters is for the fuse and the 10 millimeters is for the shunt for example Exactly the 10 millimeters having a look at these ones. I mean there is not much surface area where they actually touch the the um, the terminals of the shunt, right? See, when I compare this with a 6mm, it's the same terminal, but they just drilled it 10mm instead of 6. So the 6 looks alright, there's enough meat around it. But this one is so thin here on the outside. So I found one of the ring lugs we used to use when we built the switchboards and everything. This is a 35 by 8. So when we have a look at these two, this is the professional one I had and this is the one I ordered. The actual shaft here is a lot smaller. I think we have crimped these ones twice in the past, as far as I can remember. But this is obviously not possible with these ones here. And when I look at the surface area here, there's actually not much difference. The only difference I can really see is the thickness. Hey, look at this. Uh, it's a lot thinner. A lot. So I'm not sure if I will be happy with these ones here. Well, they were like $7 for six. Yeah, something like this. And also have a look at this hole. <laughs> they are both 35 millimeters apparently. This one looks a lot thinner, a lot. I mean, really a lot. So I'm really keen to see if this cable actually fits these ring lugs. Okay, for now I will go with these ones, but if I but if I will find out they are getting hot or warm even, I will replace them with other ones and I have to order another cable then maybe because once they are crimped you cannot take them off anymore. Well, at least that's the theory. So I just think again about my design here because, um, well, if the batteries need to be connected at the end here, one bus bar is not enough to cover these batteries in this direction here. But what you could potentially do is having two bus bars. So you could potentially do something like this. I mean, this is the wrong polar polarity now. I would need to change one of the rows here completely again. But this could be a solution to connect these two rows together here at the end. Then I don't need to crimp a cable. Um, I'm really considering this one here. So if I want to do this, I need to turn this battery around, turn this battery around and so on. So I need to turn all the batteries of this row around. And my most negative terminal would go in the corner there. Further away from the actual shunt connection. Probably it doesn't matter at all. Well, I should have thought about this before, right? And uh, now we've got everything, all the bus bars already in place. I was actually okay with putting a cable in between these end terminals here on one side. But I think this is a far better solution because I don't need to crimp a cable then. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, come over, have a good laugh at me. I just changed all the batteries over, as you have seen, and connected the bus bars again. So we've got our main negative down there and main positive on the other corner. And connected all the bus bars 
And now I realize with the last bus bar, well, if I do that, I've got my positive here and my negative here in the corner as well. So the two bus bar solution I want to have to connect these two strings together doesn't work at all. I have to change everything again now to have these terminals close together in the middle of the battery here. Ah, oh, come on, really? I think I just need to change all the bus bars over from the from this side to the other side. Okay, let's do that and hopefully it works out then. I probably should start over here. Okay, I'm absolutely back to where I was before with the first time. So we've got main negative here, main positive there, and I will crimp a cable from this positive to this negative here to connect these two rows together as planned. Well, this was the original design I had the batteries here on the floor for. That was my original thought, and then I had this idea with um, connecting two bus bars, but this will not fit, this will mess up my connections over here, so they would be crossed, and have got the positive here and the negative there, but it's the other way around where they're connected on this board. So this would be a mess up over there. Stick to your design, think it through, and, well, stick to it. <laughs> Don't change anything. Um, as you can see, I have also spaced out these cells now. So the total opposite of compression, I um, have about two, three, four millimeter gap, depending. This is all still loose because we have to connect the um, balance leads anyway. And then I align everything correctly and then tighten them. So they will stay in this configuration. And we also have a gap in between these two rows here. So this is how we are going to travel uh well there is a slight problem now i've got no idea how to cut this cable here i don't have a wire cutter which is strong enough i've got this one here but this is main this is a toy for this cable uh, can i just use the hacksaw for that a metal hacksaw i'll give it a go i've got no cutter This one is double insulated cable, it has this orange insulation and then there's a white one underneath. Is it raining outside? I don't think so, the frogs would have told me. Ooh. All right, that's how it looks like. Then we crimp this one on here and put some heat shrink over it. That's it. This this was on purpose. I don't know why. I thought it looked cool. And here it is important that you can actually see the copper there inside in this little window here. This gives you the indication that you have enough copper inside this terminal. Okay, let's get this 8 ton hydraulic crimper out and give it a go. Never used it before. Oh, that's fairly heavy. Okay, and these are all the different dies. Oh, you need always two, one top and one bottom one. Okay, I need to find number Number 10. Must be these two. Ah, oh, no, it's not 10, it's 35. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm not sure if this is intended. This is 35. Okay. All right, this will be my first crimp ever with this tool. I'm just pushing the cable in a little bit while I'm crimping. Okay, is that it? Oh, potentially that's it. Oh yeah, that's it. That's at the end of the tool, all right. This is dodgy as hell. I can see the copper moving. This did not work at all. 
Have we got the right? That's 35, 35. That's a 35 millimeter. That's how it works, right? Am I doing something wrong? <sighs> Instructions. That's not gonna work. This is the worst crimping ever. I can slide this one forward for about two or three millimeters. And if I really pull hard, I think I can pull it off. Uh, probably not, but it's not, it's not really. What the heck is going on here? Why is this not working? Yeah, well, that's the shape it makes. That's the shape. So that looks all good. Well, now I'm a bit stuck. At least it's crimped now. <sighs> so what I've done now is I've used the 25 millimeter die and crimped this slug again, this terminal. And now it's really solid. Now it's crimped and it doesn't move anymore. But you can see it on this side here, this excess material now. See over there? It's like the sharp corner now here. So I'm not sure what's going on. It's either this crimper here is not, not working correctly with a 35 millimeter die, or it's the cheap, it's the cheap terminals from eBay, I'm not sure. But the 25 millimeter works, that's good enough for me. Doesn't move anymore. Well, wish me luck. Hmm, seems to work. Well, that is not a good idea. That's a total fail. The actual copper wires, they are spreading apart when you, when you cut them with a hacksaw and you won't be able to get them into the ring terminal anymore. Unless you have one of these ring terminals with a little funnel situation here at the beginning, uh, they just fit on top of that, but the ones I have, which are straight, you won't get the copper in anymore. No way. I try to compress it back with the crimper and everything, but it's not working. It's, it's too thick now. You can see it probably here, how it spreads apart, how it gets how it gets thicker at the end here, and this is the copper wire you have just cut with the saw. This this is not a clean cut, so we need a wire cutter, but I don't have one. Eh. Well, I really didn't think about that. Really, I thought I can cut them with a the, um, with a hacksaw, but it's not working. I need to buy a wire cutter now. It does not help. Yeah, we need to cut this cable several times here for the positive and negative terminal as the feed for the solar charge controller and the inverter. And it's not possible. I don't know what I can use for that. I do some Googling if I can somehow cut this differently, but I think you need a wire cutter, which actually cuts the wire well, I guess this is one of the tools I don't have one. I've never used these big cables here. Okay, guys, I think it's uh, 10.30 already. I call it a night and we um, continue building this battery tomorrow morning, I guess. Yeah, let me think about it, what we can do. Guys, this is the one at Bunnings, another $30. So this goes to up to 14 millimeter cutting capacity suitable for aluminium and copper spring load jaws lifetime warranty $30 okay I'll charge the car overnight and we have to go to Bunnings tomorrow I need to I need this cutter there's no other way yeah.